Hi guys, today I have something really exciting for you in support of the Rugrats reboot, which is coming to Paramount Plus on May 27th. I was able to speak to some of the voice cast. Now there are going to be three separate videos from three different interviews. Unfortunately, the way that the interview went is well, they took audio and they took a screenshot, but they did not provide video. However, I mean, I have the full audio for you guys here. It is a lot of fun because you get to hear the actors really slipping into the voices and sometimes they have discussions back and forth in the voices. I mean, it was so much fun and an absolute blast to be a part of. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy this interview. Let me know down below in the comments if you like this format. Like I said, unfortunately, they did not send the video, but I wanted to make sure I still put the interview out for you guys, so let me know your thoughts. If it's your first time here, I'd love it if you'd take one second to hit that subscribe button, and if you enjoy the content, go ahead and hit that notification bell. Now, just for reference, if this is your first time here, most of the time when I post interviews, they are not audio only, they are full video, so just keep that in mind. Hey, Tessa from Mama's Geeky here. Thank you so much for stopping by my YouTube channel. In the third and final Rugrats interview, I chat with Ashley Ray Spillers, who voices Dee Dee Pickles, and Tommy Dewey, he voices Stu Pickles. So what's it like being on the cast of such an iconic show? Because you've joined a new a new cast of it's, something. It's, a, it's incredible. I mean, it's a, one of those, it's just one of those shows on the Mount Rushmore of um that's a weird metaphor for <laughs> but whatever um you know it's up there and to get that call it, the first thing is just pure ecstasy and then the second feeling is oh man i hope i don't screw this up <laughs> um and it's in terms of doing in terms of the work of doing it th these are the the best writers in the game it's such a joy to to read these scripts and then record them um so much humor um so so well conceived um uh, I'm, um, you know, I'm a kid in a candy store with this thing. Yeah, same. It's just utter joy, really, being a part of it. It's so cool. And same feeling. I can't, I don't, I, I can't believe I'm there. I'm like, thank you so much. What am I doing here? Okay, I'm going to, I I will not be the one to screw it up. We're doing this because it's so wonderful it, like you can't you know you don't want to mess with it <laughs> all right uh next ashley saunders hi so kind of along those lines did you grow up watching the show and did you have a favorite rug rat it's a great question watched some of it growing up um i'm not near uh, like through all of them, I, I won't claim to, you know, know Rugrats history backwards and forwards, um, but loved it. And um, I just love Chucky. I think, I just want to take care of Chucky, make sure he's okay. <laughs> yeah, um, I did watch it growing up and I wasn't even a super, I, I didn't watch a ton of cartoons. I would always watch what I called real movies with real people, but Rugrats was one <laughs> that I did watch and I loved it. And I always felt, I mean, Chucky, it's hard not to love him. He is so lovable. And yes, you do just want to like bring him into your arms and say, it's going to be okay. But also Tommy, Tommy is so sweet. He is such a supportive friend. I think that's, that's who I got to go with. <laughs> Next you, do play, you do play his mom, so. Good. Yeah, maybe I'm, you know, a little <laughs> biased. Next up, Julie Nichols. Yeah, hi guys. Um, so what I want to know is, um, you know, I've been very familiar with the show. I watched it when it started in 91. I was like a huge Nick kid growing up. And when those shows came on, it was like huge because it was a new um, you know, Nick had never made their own uh, animation before. And it was just like, ah, um, so of course I had to go back and watch the first episode. And, um, you know, I, the parents in the show, it, it's so fun watching it now that I'm a parent. <laughs> when I was, you know, 11 watching it, I totally um, connected with the kids, but now I'm like, oh my God, this is hilarious. So 
when it comes to the parent point of view. So I want to know, like, what would you tell parents who are watching this show now with their kids? Because I really feel like it's a fantastic show for adults as well. Um, what would you say to a parent thinking about watching, like introducing this to their kids? Well, Ashley's heard me say this before. It, na it nails the satire of modern uh, millennial parenting. I, I mean, mm -hmm. like such great adult humor around iPads and phones going off and a machine that you just yell out what you want to order and it shows up in a package at your door. I mean, that is, um, that's, that they have, they have so fully explored in the, in the episodes we've recorded today, those ideas. And it really refreshes the, um, the, the series. And, um, and then it also nails sort of my parents' generation, the kind of Woodstock generation through Lou Pickles. And so <laughs> visiting that kind of humor and, and kind of laughing at my dad by laughing at, at Lou is really fun and funny. I mean, you don't want to miss this if you're an a, adult, truly. It's, it's laugh out loud funny. Yeah, it just nails all the things. I mean, again, I, Tommy's heard me say this too, but it's what made it so special before was it was so timely. And I think it was so current to what was happening and that's the same now. And so, and that's just the stuff that makes you laugh, the stuff that's true that you see yourself in. And so I think all my friends are having babies right now. And so watching it, is such a treat because it's just like, this is them. I am on the outside looking at them and now I'm kind of playing one of them. So I like, it's you, you're gonna love it. I mean, it's pretty great. Tessa Smith. Hey guys, Tessa with mamasgeeky.com. Thanks for taking the time today. Absolutely love this show. I was a big fan of the original and watching it. I was like, this is like the same thing, but like, Super updated and so good and so funny. And uh, I want to know, because both of you guys have some great lines in this. Um, is there any room for improvising or is it all just on the page? Yeah, I I think we, I've definitely, they have, you know, their writing is so brilliant that you don't need to, but it's also so brilliant that when you're working on it, you get so taken in that things do just come out of you sometimes. And they're totally open. Like Charlie Adler, our director, loves it when something comes out. He's like, yes, yes, no, that's brilliant. So yeah, there is room for it. Absolutely. But also if there weren't, it's so good that you don't, you know, but yeah, we can, Tommy. Yeah, well, and just to add a little thing to that, I find the most fun uh, improvisations and, and when it really lands for me watching it back is the is the stuff between the dialogues, the almost sub vocal stuff the, the 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 visual landscape is so detailed in this update, but so is so is the audio. So the, the little like, no, oh, you know, like that little stuff that kind of stitches it all together. They let us have a lot of fun with that. And um some of the biggest laughs for me on the show come off of all these great actors doing that little stuff. I mean, Tony Hale does this little mumbly stuff as Chaz, it's so great. Um, so yeah, scripts are great. We, we, you know, we definitely stick to them, but, um, but the little grace notes that you can kind of throw on top um, are fun to do. And I think, I think hope slash, I think slash hope they help the show a little bit. <laughs> uh, Vanessa Diaz. Hi. Hi. You both are doing great job taking over these roles. What was your process like to find the voices of these characters? Like, did you watch previous episodes to kind of match the cadence or things like that? Well, first, first things first, shout out to the great Jack Riley as the original Stu. I did not, I watched the show, fan of the show, did not go back and rewatch because I think it's real peril for an actor to, uh, to mimic, you know, uh, then it mm -hmm. just becomes, it starts to feel kind of half-baked and not, not organic to the thing. So had a sense of the character and then um, was, was kind of given free range to just, just, you know, swing for the fences in my own voice. Um, uh, but this, it's, you know, Stu's, Stu's so well realized it's, it's there, you know, um, mm -hmm. if that, uh, if that answers it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, it, I, I don't, I definitely think we're not, um, imitating 
who they once were because it, like he said, they were so brilliant. Melanie Chardoff is Dee Dee. It's like, nobody can do that. I am not going to try to do that. Yeah. But um, so it's just leaning into the things that, you know, like I really lean into Dee Dee's kind of ner nervousness around things and really, you know, like worrying and caring. And that sort of brings out this new, kind of flavor, I don't flavor, what am I saying? But you, know. <laughs> you give a very flavorful performance. Oh, yes. <laughs> Thanks, Vanessa. Thank you. Claudia? Hi. 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 Well, I have a question for both of you. I was super excited with the new adventures. So I wanted to ask you both, would you be able to share a favorite moment or a very special moment with us? Oh. Ashley, you, you go. Oh gosh. Um, I mean, I it's I'm I'm gonna sound so dumb and cheesy, but I think just it's all been so special and fun just working on this, you know, and getting to step into these roles. And when we're recording with Kate and with Charlie, um we're just what Tommy was saying, like these moments where uh, the in-between moments with the the fun you get to have with the squeals and the noises that make everybody come alive so much. I mean, I don't know. I can't pick a moment because it's all so much fun. I honestly think recording the first episode when we were all we were there together and it was just sort of this moment of for the first time speaking out loud and out of our, you know, our, with our voices and going like, oh, we're doing this. That was kind of, for me, like, oh, this is going to be such a fun ride. I yeah, don't know. <laughs> I, I, I totally agree. I think one of the first, one of the first pieces of work we did on this was me and you and mm -hmm. Tony Hale and Natalie Morales all, yep. all recording together in the same yeah. booth. And, um, so hearing each other in real time was just such a trip. I love all those actors. And um, um, so, so those experiences in terms of the process are really special. And then I don't, I don't want to give anything away, but there is a, um, there's an episode where, where Stu, I, I, cause I don't, I don't think I'm allowed to as well. Uh, <laughs> but I, uh, um, there's an episode where Stu kind of has to come to terms with aging and it, it's, it was a trip. I, I because I can identify and, um, they just nailed the humor of it. Thank you. Thank you. Monica? Hi, everyone. Monica from Popcorn Reviews. I am a 90s kid, so I grew up watching the Rugrats and was super excited to see it was coming back. I mean, with Dee Dee and Stu, I have to imagine it was exciting to take on these roles, but that there was a little bit of reimagination going on with bringing them into the current day and age. Like Dee Dee is now a blogger, which I know a lot of us can relate to, obviously. What was your favorite modernization, if you will, for either the show or your characters? Yeah, um, I think what you're speaking to, Dee Dee is a blogger. She's you know, she's in, she was an arts major in college. She's into all sorts of crafts. And um, I think just how passionate she is about things and how she's always finds something else to be so passionate about. I think that's kind of my favorite thing about her, the enthusiast that she is. Um, I kind of relate to that. Like not any one thing. It's like, oh, now it's this. Oh, now I want to do this. So, yeah. This is a little bit of a sideways answer, but I love that in the era of Apple and Amazon and Siri and Alexa and all that, Stu is still like inventing stuff in a shed behind the house. Like, like he can take on those entities in any <laughs> real way. I find hilarious and that he does so with this optimism as if these gazillion dollar companies aren't gonna beat him to the punch is uh, that I think, so taking this old school idea, but putting it up against like what we know to be modern technology that obviously the show is, is filled with in this really fun, interesting satirical way is uh, um, that stuff's really, really fun to play and to, and to do. Yeah. Kathy? Kopka? Hi. Hi, guys. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I am a 90s kid. I grew up with the show. I love it. I'm so excited you guys are back. Tell me what is um, one or two things you love about your character and 
are you similar to your characters? Yeah, um, I love Dee Dee's, I just love her kindness. I think that she is just inherently kind and wants to do the best she can with everyone and everything. But also I think she has a fear that she's always kind of having to fight through to, to like do a lot of things. And I think I very much relate to that, like being scared, but also being scared, but knowing like, I have to do this thing. I love that about her. I relate to it. And so there's always just like a, a quiveriness to, to like standing up for your family when you need to, or that's just one of my favorite qualities about her. You can see the fear, but she doesn't let it stop her. And I love that. She's brave. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great answer. The, uh, what do I, I love Stu's unwavering optimism, despite not having the best success rate in his trade. Um, am I like him? I'm not, I wish I was that optimistic. Um, I try to be, but what I, I am like him in, I do have a bit of a nervous energy, which I think which is really cute between Stu and Dee Dee is they're both kind of, they're both kind of hyped. <laughs> um, <laughs> And, um, and also, I think both Stu and Dee Dee have this sense of adventure. They're making stuff. They're putting it out into the world. What kind of cool ways can I engage with the world around me? And uh, I, do, I, I, I do think I have a bit of that um, in me, just that, that if it, call it a spirit, spirit of adventure. Yeah. They're both really unconventional, which is super cool and they're really, really cool. supportive. <laughs> like they're so supportive of the other doing the like funky stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's really cool. Kim? Thanks for chatting today. I love how the Rugrats has been updated for new generations. Um, how has your character changed since the original series? Um, yeah, I think Dee Dee now, as I was saying, she's very um, she's, she's always been inherently kind, but I think now she has this sweetness that's almost like saccharine at times. Like she's so, so sweet. And um, I just love her artsiness. I love her craftiness and how much of an enthusiast she is about all things. I, that's kind of my favorite thing about her. I mean, vlogging, come on, that's brilliant. <laughs> she didn't used to do that. <laughs> Yeah, in the original series, it was implied that Lou has moved in with Stu and Dee Dee, and now it has flopped, and it appears that Stu and Dee Dee now live in Lou's house, and I think that really kind of nails the ship, right? It, it, it's, it's Stu through this millennial lens. His, his parents' generation said, do whatever you want. You know, sure, you want to be an inventor, do it, but now Stu is at an age where kind of the chickens are coming home to roost. He didn't really hit pay dirt, and now he's he's moved in with his parents. So that's that, sh that shift towards um, a, a different style of cohabitating with your family members and parenting and stuff like that. Kind of, if, if there's something that governs the new stew, I think that's, that's one of the main things. Janice? Yeah, hi. Um, very excited to talk to you guys. I'm Janice from Mommy Blog Expert, and I just wanted to ask you both, going back to talking about technology and how do you think that portrays the characters both from a family perspective or, for example, parents, are they finding, are, are parents or the kids using it as a distraction tool to avoid each other, that sort of thing? I think in, the, in, in, in our universe for this show, it's used as a tool for the kids to get into more trouble, <laughs> um, which I, I think is great. And I think um, what I like is, is these, these, in this version of Rugrats, these parents, despite this technology, are, are finding ways to connect with their kids. Um, you know, I think they, they haven't it's not a cynical view of things. They have not given up hope that, oh man, just kids are, are just gonna look at their iPads all day. I, I'm, I'm glad it doesn't take that position. It kind of holds, 
it kind of keeps the bar high for for parenting in modern times. Um, but it is certainly a chaos agent. Uh, you know, a lot of my favorite episodes um, begin with. Um, I think you guys got to watch at least the first one where Angelica gets into gets into Granddad's dating app, and and that just that just stirs everything out, which I just think is so brilliant and and so great. Yeah, I mean, it's almost like an agent for some mischief, you know, more than a tool that's being used to like appease babies or anything. It's like if the babies get their hands on it, what what will then happen? Or and I don't think anybody leans on it too much. I mean, Dee Dee uses it to sell her crafts, but that's kind of it. And like check in on the babies because, you know, she's nervous if she leaves them. But um, yeah. I don't know. I think they struck a nice balance with incorporating it, but not, you know, not not showing the reality of some kids who are just like looking at their screens a lot of the time as a way to like keep them quiet. <laughs> yeah, one way of looking at it is it's a cautionary tale. I mean, it shows the sort of pitfalls of an over-reliance on, on mm -hmm. technology. It doesn't it really funny creative yeah. way? Thank you. Thank you so much to all of my monetary supporters, my members here on YouTube, as well as my patrons. If you haven't joined yet, please consider doing so. We have some really awesome perks, including a monthly Zoom meeting where we get to talk face to face. Thank you again to everyone who supports me.